Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, we're featuring Dr. Serenia Wiles. She received her MD and PhD from the Mayo Clinic, and she's a specialized dermatologist training in regenerative medicine and an additional focus on skin aging. She's a true expert in her field and has a research lab focused on cellular senescence in age-related skin disease and wound healing. Her areas of expertise are anti-aging, stem cell technology, exosomes, and regenerative medicine. Today, she joins me on our Expert on the Microphone series in our Going Deep segment, chatting about the popularity of regenerative medicine, what the term means for you, and why carboxytherapy is a top-trending skincare search. Welcoming now to the show is the amazing Dr. Serenio Wiles. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Dr. Wilds, regenerative medicine is a form of treatment that uses the body's own cells to promote healing. This is something that anybody could figure out in a quick Google search. But regenerative medicine has tremendous potential, one would say. But the marketing is ahead of the science in a lot of areas, right? So what does regenerative medicine mean to you, especially in the context of dermatology and skin health? Absolutely. That's a great start. Essentially, regenerative medicine is this new frontier. You know, we're, we've been fascinated by this idea that our bodies can regenerate. It actually dates back to Greek mythology. So if you think about the story of Prometheus, he had Zeus's eagle come peck at his liver night after night, and the liver would regenerate the next day. In fact, the Greek word for hepar actually means to repair, which is, um, signifies that the liver is the first and uh, organ that can regenerate and that we had a clue into that. Now the skin naturally follows suit. So we we know that our skin turns over every 30 days. We have this great source of epidermal stem cells in the skin that contribute to that nice healthy glow, especially when we use different topicals. So this idea of regenerative medicine is utilizing our body's own ways to biohack or to regenerate and to optimize it. So how can we learn from our own way to repair regenerate, wound heal, and then take those strategies outside to boost those. And so that we can stimulate healthy collagen, elastin, and all the good stuff that we're looking for in the skin. This talk fascinates me. I've been to so many of these conferences in your field. And like many other areas of medicine, the personalized approach will be key to developing better treatments, right? And the mantra for precision medicine is the right treatment for the right patient at the right time. And if you can identify, for instance, the best PRP or cell therapy formula for each individual treatment, you're going to have a much more precise way of offering this to patients. So it all goes hand in glove. Now, your research lab focuses on cellular senescence in age-related skin disease and wound healing. Could you explain to our audience what cellular senescence is and its significance in skin aging? Absolutely. So cell senescence is the root cause of aging. So this is where we look and understand why we age, how we age. And before we used to think about this um, as a degenerative process, but now we actually have a handle on it to understand that we can actually control these knobs. There are nine factors that we call collectively hallmarks of aging and things like mitochondrial dysfunction, telomere attrition, or your telomeres that kind of shorten over time, Cellular senescence is one of them. In fact, it's thought to be the core one that affects all of the other nine. So what is cellular senescence? It's the state that the cells go into, kind of like a zombie state, kind of like a limb, like a limbo uh, between um, cell death and cell renewal. So why does a cell do this? So this is actually a cell cycle arrest. Um, so typically when a cell is becoming a cancer cell or going down a path that it doesn't want to, it kind of gets arrested. Our body has this evolutionary mechanism to stop that pathway, right? But over time, when we aging and our tissues are aging over time, this happens haphazardly. So it's the cells like your fibroblasts that normally would make collagen and elastin undergo senescence and they get arrested. And now they're not producing these healthy uh, extracellular matrix or the collagen scaffold that creates volume in your skin, but rather they're 
creating harmful signals. Um, I kind of talk about cell sen senescence signals as like the rotten apple that spoils the, car the cart, right? So it's one or two cells that continuously create the signal of degrade collagen and not produce healthy collagen. So, so understanding cell senescence actually helps us have a better understanding of why we age and target those root causes of aging. Understood. Cellular senescence. This is the new trend. We're going to be hearing more of this in 2024 because this year's skincare doesn't focus solely on addressing the signs of aging. But to your point, it's going to make it, it's going to try to make cells behave younger. And, and stem cell technology and exosomes are areas of expertise for you. So how do these technologies contribute to regenerative medicine, particularly in the context of skin rejuvenation and anti-aging treatments? Yeah. So when we think about regenerative technologies, it's all about the recipient. It's all about who is the right person to get this um, a, a product, right? So if, even for PRP, there's so much variability in who's getting these platelet-rich plasma or PRP treatments. Um, if you were to think about that and understand why, it's potentially age dependent. And we're not talking about chronological age, like your 40s, 50s, 60s, but we're talking about your biological age, which is that you could be a 40-year-old, but actually have cells or um, an environment in your body that's more like a 50-year-old. And the vice and the con opposite is also true. So you can actually be a 40-year-old with a 30-year-old's molecular system. So that's the difference between chronological age and biological age. So by understanding how regenerative medicine is received, especially thinking about things like exosome technology and others, we know that if you have a skin environment that has less senescent burden, you actually have primed it now to receive those regenerative signals much better because you've cleared out the noise. You've cleared out the bad influencers that are creating havoc. And now those cells can regenerate much faster. This all sounds fascinating. I mean, you would think that people would be running out to get these treatments, PRP and exosomes. And I guess if you really think of it, what's the worst part, right? But there is a worst part. Exosomes can also contain things we don't want, such as the stem cell donor's DNA and the lack of safety data and FDA approval are what make exosomes in serums and creams such a contentious trend. For example, a 2022 study published in the journal Stem Cells International suggested that exosomes taken from cancer cells can fuel tumor growth, which is why screening the health of donors is incredibly important, bringing me full circle to the work that you do and the importance of clinically researched, clinically verified. Bringing me to this, this, this next trend, so carboxytherapy was one of the top trending Google searches in Q4 of 2023. So carbon dioxide therapy, what we know, also known as carboxytherapy, again, quick Google search. This involves the administration of carbon dioxide gas, to my understanding, for various medical and cosmetic purposes. And now in the skin, in the context of skin rejuvenation, carboxytherapy is used to improve skin tone, texture, elasticity, and so much more. My question to you is, carboxytherapy seems to be a top trend in skincare searches, but can you elaborate on what carboxytherapy is and why it has gained popularity in recent times? Absolutely. So carboxytherapy is really exciting technology. This is like cutting edge technology that has actually been available for decades in the area of hyperbaric chambers. So we've used hyperbaric chambers for wound healing. And it's this idea that if you actually have tissues with less oxygen supply, they it, supply meets demand. So there's actually you create more vasodilation or opening of the blood vessels to allow for more blood flow to the tissues. And carboxytherapy has allowed that to be a topical version. So now when we think about procedures, especially as dermatologists looking at lasers and other types of procedures that we do that have a longer downtime, this is a great way to add as an adjuvant or supplement so that we increase the blood flow, the growth factors, the microcirculation um, that will ultimately allow us to rejuvenate those tissues much better and faster. Exactly. And I've been using CO2 lift products for half a year now. And it's done tremendous things for my skin, for the skin down there. And, you know, when you research it a bit more, it's it all breaks down to a science. And the method of invasive carboxytherapy is based on the use of sterile carbon dioxide gas injected into the patient, either subcutaneously or 
intradermally, right? So the, the positive effects when you when you do when you look at the research of invasive carboxytherapy are explained by the mere fact that carbon dioxide enables almost immediate reactions to your point at the cellular level and interacts with fermented components of plasma and proteins and carbohydrates to form active carbon dioxide and its products, which ensures the normalization of pH and tissues. It's it, listening to you, you and the speakers at some of these conferences has taught me so much about skincare and I'm so excited about the work that you do. So how do you envision the future of regenerative medicine intersecting with traditional derma dermatological treatments and practices? Regenerative medicine is going to be able to catapult traditional dermatological procedures to the next level. So traditional procedures rely on things like wound healing and thermal injury. So lasers, for instance, a CO2 laser um, makes these little thermal selective damage to your skin and injury results in new collagen, new rejuvenation, new repair of tissues. Now, with regenerative medicine, it basically boosts that ability for all performers to be at the same level. So it creates an environment for biostimulation, bioregeneration. What does that mean? So it's the idea that we can um, allow our own bodies to respond to these signals of lasers or topicals that we've been utilizing for decades, but now taking them to another level by creating um, signals that are positive for exactly what we want. I mean, even exosome technology that you mentioned, it's so variable, but if you pick a specific source such as platelets, we published a, uh, in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal about how platelet exosomes can create regenerative signals just by applying topically. So I think those are what we are um, looking towards is to kind of be able to use these different regenerative aesthetic treatments um, in the in the in conjunction with uh, traditional dermatological procedures. But I will add a caveat that if we are trying to do anything related to true treatment, true medical indication, then we are we have to go through the FDA to get INDs and other proper regulation. Yes, of course. And it's interesting because one of the most exciting aspects when you talk about this intersection is the potential for for these personalized treatments tailored to each individual's unique needs and genetic makeup, which is at the root of it all. And so by leveraging technologies such as stem cells and exosomes and, 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 you know, the research that you do, your, your cellular, um, senescence research, dermatologists now can develop targeted therapies that address specific skin conditions at their root cause, which I think is what was not happening in the past. It was just putting a Band-Aid over a Band-Aid. Now you're going one, you're, you're going, you're literally looking beneath the skin, no pun intended. So I would actually add to that, that we should um, have more FDA regulated therapies with regenerative medicine. So when we talk about stem cells now, there's not very, there are no approved stem cell therapies um, in the United States. So even um, in stem cells now, we need to distinguish the hype versus hope that's out there because stem cells are a very exciting term to throw around. But when you look at the root cause of it, it's actually needs to be grown in a lab. It needs to be expanded. They need to be delivered in a very specific way. And even if you deliver them, they actually tend to go almost to be like cell garbage. They kind of don't go to the sites that um, you need them to. So we're moving away from stem cells and into the exosome sphere now. But even with exosome technology, where I see the next generation of therapies um, emerging is, is to be under proper FDA surveillance. And because there's so much variability, um, you have to look at these products from a different light. This is not your over-the-counter Tylenol or Advil, where the chemistry is relatively similar between one pill and another. There's so much difference between those regenerative products. They can be dependent on source. They can be dependent on manufacturing strategies, how you're isolating them. So it's a whole different ballgame compared to traditional drugs. Yeah, it definitely is. And that brings you back full circle to your the need for regulation. And of course, education plays a crucial role in understanding and advancing uh, regenerative medicine as as per your position. And what when you when you look at the efforts that are being made to integrate regenerative medicine um, education into dermatology programs, how can practi practitioners stay updated on the latest advancements in this field? Because this is very, very micro. 
Absolutely. I think going to currently the way education is happening is around conferences. So going to um, CME programs where they're offering credit for regenerative medicine or regenerative aesthetics or regenerative medicine and dermatology will be really important. And going to a credible, accredited bodies like the American Association of Dermatology, American Academy of Dermatology, or ASDS, which is the um, Society for Dermatological Surgery. So all of those um, trusted organizations that are at the national level, that's who you want to be looking for for these different uh, CME accredited workshops that they're offering. Um, and then and an understanding that dermatology residencies are also starting to incorporate these electives where we can share different um, emerging technologies that way. Now, there are also workshops that are emerging with regenerative medicine workshops, but keep in mind, a lot of therapies are not approved yet. So you want to be really cautious of what is offered out there in terms of even education. Well, we are out of time and thank you so much for so much insight, so much transparency, so much education. You are definitely at the forefront of this research and education when it comes to everything dermatology and regenerative medicine. I thank you so much for coming on. It was truly a pleasure speaking with you today. Great to be on. Thank you. Regenerative medicine definitely holds promise for addressing challenging dermatological conditions such as chronic wounds or scars where traditional treatments may have limited effectiveness. Techniques like tissue engineering and gene therapy offer new avenues for promoting tissue regeneration and restoring skin function in these cases. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, and that was the amazing Dr. Serenia Wiles. You can definitely check her out on the gram at drwiles.derm. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2 Lift lift.com.